Hey guys, today I am back with my K40 laser and I want to test something out together with you. You may have heard about the third axis or rotary attachment for the K40. This basically adds an additional axis to the system. If you're not familiar with the mechanical function of the K40, here you can see the setup, starting with a laser tube that gets deflected by an array of mirrors. Those mirrors are mounted to a sled that is free to move in two axes. The X and Y axes are powered by two stepper motors that carry the mirrors and so the laser beam to an exact position in an exact moment of time. Now this works fine for flat surfaces, but what if we want to cut or engrave cylindrical objects such as mugs and bottles? The laser beam needs to hit the surface in a 90 degree angle in its focal point. A cylinder does not have a flat surface, at least not um, on the sides. That's where the rotary tool comes in. It grabs onto the part uh, and spins it around its own nodal or um, centric axis. In this configuration, it sort of replaces the y-axis that usually is moved by the sled and keeps the beam in the right angle to our working piece. Now, I was talking about the ideal way of engraving a cylindrical shape, but if you know my channel, um, you may know that ideal does not mean that it is impossible to do it differently. Sure, I'm not expecting a perfect result, but it answers the question such as, can you engrave cylindrical shapes without the additional rotary attachment? I tried to engrave my Man Cave Effects logo onto cylinders of different diameters to see at what point the laser gets so much out of focus that it stops engraving properly. I will take some notes and make you an Excel table with measurements that work for me, so you don't have to lose much time. Now I gathered together some cylinders with different diameters. Starting with a 20mm cylinder, a 43mm cylinder, a 53mm cylinder, a 73 mm cylinder and a 102 mm cylinder. I will start off with the smallest one by engraving the logo in three sizes 10 by 10 mm, 15 by 15 mm, and 20 by 20 mm. Of course, 20 by 20 mm will result in cutting off the edges of the logo as the tube's own diameter is 20 mm, but I want to see how it looks like and how the laser beam behaves when um, slowly gets more and more out of focus. Okay, so I already removed the six screws that hold the honeycomb um, in place. This is actually the laser bed where usually you put your working material on it. But in this case, as we are engraving onto 3D objects, um, I need some more depth in the machine. By the way, those six pillars who are holding the uh, actual laser bed, they are 75 millimeters high and they simply have uh, some M4 screws in there that secures the laser bed in place. So if you want to change, you know, whatever is in there when your machine comes, you can simply remove it and uh, swap it with whatever you like. Again, other than a router, a laser cutter does not require to mount the working piece to the working area, as there is no physical contact between the tool and the working piece. So we can just put it in here, align it, straighten it out and give it a try. Okay, so I will switch on the machine, put on the water pump, put on my glasses. By the way, you can uh, move the sled in both axes in very tiny steps using the arrow keys. This video isn't about uh, what materials we can engrave, but what shapes we can engrave. So this apparently is just paper. Okay, so let's give this a try. Number one is done. We will have a detailed look after I finished all of them. Okay, so this is 43 millimeters and um, the logos are 20 by 20 millimeters, 30 by 30 and 40 by 40. Let's give this a try.
Okay, so here's the thing. Um, the first quarter of the print did not work well and I was asking myself what's wrong and I was cleaning the laser lens before starting this project and uh, apparently I mounted the air assist hose in a wrong way um, that it's now blocking the laser light and also it slowly burns through <laughs> my air assist hose so I'm trying to keep this out of the way <laughs> it's a bit unfortunate that. Okay guys, so it took me about uh, two hours to engrave those five items and um, I learned some things here I and mean, it's pretty interesting. I want to share this with you. Um, First of all, uh, I learned to not put my air assist hose in the way of the laser because it will burn a hole through and it will ruin some of your engravings. That's a note I made to myself. The other thing is, um, first of all, this is not a laboratory test. I'm not coming up with percentages of uh, how much distortion we get on a canister of 73 millimeters. I'm talking about if visually it works or not. Is it something you could do or is it something that just doesn't work because it's just way too distorted or whatever. First thing I learned is as long you have organic lines, it you won't see that much distortion on it um, because you don't know if, if it's, you don't even know if it's distorted or not. But that's one thing. So let's start off here. Um, so this is the 20 millimeter um, cigar canister. Um, first uh, engraving went out badly because I haven't aligned the thing 100% straight. So uh, I made a second pass and that was pretty spot on. So this is a 10 by 10 millimeter, 15 by 15 millimeter and 20 by 20 millimeter engraving. Um, the 10 millimeter engraving is absolute fine for me. Um, in my opinion, as I said, all of them will have distortions. I know that because we are engraving on a round surface. But um, visually, the 10 by 10 is absolutely fine. And um, the 15 by 15 starts to distort uh, too much. Even this has a little bit of depth to it. This as well, it could work, but I would not recommend it. Uh, as I said, um, when I would skip the bordure, it would work actually in this size. 20 by 20 millimeters, okay, that's not a deal. It's not working because 20 uh, millimeters of diameter and a 20 millimeter print won't work. You can't um, c cut corners with a laser. But, um, well, even the logo though is okay. I would not recommend it to a client or something of doing this with, without a rotary accessory. But worst case, it could be done. Well, let's move on to the 33 millimeters. 33 millimeter cardboard, toilet paper roll. Um, okay, so this is a 20 by 20, a 30 by 30 and a 40 by 40 millimeter. Um, 20 by 20 is absolutely fine. No visible distortion whatsoever. Um, 30 by 30 millimeters works as well. It is nicely engraved. It has a nice depth to it all around the thing. So absolutely doable. You can uh, engrave a 30 by 30 logo onto a 40 millimeter diameter um, object. 40 by 40 millimeters is not really working. As I said before, the logo itself is absolutely fantastic. It's just the board you, you know, this didn't went through at all. And um, this is quite distorted, but the logo itself isn't so could work depending on your logo. Hmm. Let's move on to the 53 millimeters. So this is a 30 by 30, 40 by 40, 50 by 50. Um, okay, so the 30 by 30, absolutely fine. No distortion. The 40 by 40 works as well. Little distortions on the, uh, on the ends here, but still absolutely acceptable in my opinion. The 50 by 50 on a 53 millimeter um, object, well, okay, there the board here is missing again. The logo is absolutely fine, should work, but the straight lines come out very distorted. You can see it from far away even. So not really recommended, but possible. 
Okay, the next canister is the 73 millimeters, 50 by 50, 60 by 60, and 70 by 70. So 50 by 50 is absolutely fine. 60 by 60, 60 by 60 did not penetrate in the lines here. It did penetrate here, but not here. So this is not working in this case. The logo is fine, sure, but the outer the outer border is not working. Okay. So 50 by 50 works fine. 60 by 60, not really. 70 by 70, even the logo is nah, not even the logo went through. To be sure, <laughs> 50 by 50. Now the 102 millimeters. Um, okay, so first of all, um, there is some parts of the engraving missing. That was because of my air assist hose that came in the way of the laser. Um, so we're not talking about this because this line was fine and it just started here, this area here that um, did not penetrate, uh, got penetrated. Um, the laser bed height is 75 millimeters. So um, the space between this can and the laser was about 2 or 20 millimeters. The engraving came out pretty nice. It's a little bit spreaded because, I mean, you know, the laser um, was not in this focal point, but um, the logo itself works though. Okay, so that was quite interesting. I will just check, can I pull this off? I can pull this off, yeah. That's nice. See, when this just was would be the logo without anything around it, it would come out pretty nicely, even on glass or something. Okay guys, so this was a quite interesting project. I hope you liked it too. It was pretty informative for me at least. Um, I hope I could share this uh, with you guys as well. If you have more questions, just uh, leave me a comment down below. Um, it would be awesome if you would subscribe and uh, ring this little bell so you get notified when I upload the next video. Um, there are some more K40 laser videos coming up. I have some more ideas. Uh, I collected all the data I uh, got out of this little experiment here and uh, put it together, as I said, in a Excel sheet, uh, which is free to download on my web page. The link is in the description below. It gives you an example of what size of uh, images you can safely engrave onto different diameters of cylinders with an indicator of how distorted it will look like. Okay, so I hope you stay tuned and um, I see you very soon. Until then, see ya!